Welcome to IRIS Lab. Uh, IRIS, IRIS Lab stands for Applied and Innovative Research for Immersive Sound Lab. It's great to see you. Um, and let me introduce uh, IRIS Lab. My name is Sung Yang Kim. I'm in charge of this lab. Um, there are three uh, research focus on uh, this uh, research lab. First one is recreating um, interactive and participatory uh, virtual auditory environment. Um, this is uh, kind of stemmed from you know my uh, original background. So we are uh, have a, we have a strong uh, interest on sound recording and reproduction techniques. So music recording and music reproduction is uh, my. Uh, PhD study. So starting from there, we are trying to expand to the virtual auditory environment. Second one is oral heritage preservation. Um, it's how to preserve uh, important uh, oral information in historical buildings. That is the our uh, research focus. Third one is gamification of auditory training. So since my background is sound um, recording and reproduction, I also have a strong interest in how to train this kind of uh, auditory skills and then um, expand it from you know a simple auditory training towards uh, rehabilitation related auditory training those three are our research topics so starting from the uh, virtual acoustics as you can see here we are focusing more into the uh, interactive space Reft is the good, uh, you know, reproduction uh, capabilities. But uh, in this room, you know, the participant or listener doesn't do any active, you know, interaction with the sound. However, in a concert hall, as you can see here, they kind of interact with the musicians. So the acoustics is should be more interactive with the participant. Participant. Therefore, how to make those kind of interactive and participatory virtual acoustics is the uh, one thing. This is the conceptual, you know, uh, idea, right? If you a uh, the left top corner is a very passive and non-interactive space, but um, the if we combine your own sound with the target acoustics, we can make a kind of D situation like a. a left bottom situation where your voice is interacting with the target environment. Using these technologies on concept, I was able to uh, do a kind of special concert. Uh, the musician is actually virtually enter to the uh, one uh, Renaissance uh, church in Italy. So uh, similarly, I did the same same concert where uh, the audiences is on players can virtually enter uh, the, uh, the, the one uh, very uh, well-known uh, uh, concert hall in uh, Europe. So using uh, this technology, uh, currently um, I am working with a composer uh, so that uh, she can actually actively using the room acoustic as a part of music. So not only just reverb or room acoustic is you know, additional component, but also it becomes a core, uh, the uh, idea of a musical you know, uh, ingredient. So she actually, uh, the composer is actually used uh, the uh, virtual room acoustic system as a part of her composition. And uh, last year, 2020, we had a, a premiere concert in uh, Yamaha Ginza Hall in Tokyo, Japan. Even it's a kind of a, a COVID situation, we were able to uh, deliver our uh, music, that special music that combined with the string quartet and then uh, virtual room acoustics uh, to the uh, audiences. So here the composer and I am discussing about the technical details, how to represent uh, the musical idea to the audiences. And as you can see, um, the music is actually changing, uh, you, know, uh, you know, in this composition, different piece, different part is using a different kind of uh, music, different kind of, sorry, reverberation. And you can hear some uh,
may listen or may not. I mean, depending on how you know quiet quiet your room is or how uh, uh, your system is capable of delivering this you know uh, subtle differences. Is, but um, you may uh, notice that the reverb or the room acoustic is changing actively in here L part and. This is not post-production. This is the kind of real production in the concert. So we are generating this reverb change in real time with the musician. So the musician was able to listen the change of this kind of you know, uh, you know room and space uh, atmosphere is changing as well. Therefore, this is kind of new things that we were trying to develop more of this kind of music and space related research. Second one is oral heritage preservation. Instead of me explaining everything, uh, this video actually uh, is more well-produced content explaining about the project. Therefore, let me just play. So we've come today to document this historic building in Rochester from an auditory and acoustical perspective to begin documentation of what we call aural heritage, so the sound sensing characteristics for people of spaces, spaces of social and cultural historical importance, such as this building to Rochester. So basically using this technology, we can change your room acoustics as if you are in Carnegie Hall or as if you are in this Rochester Saving Bank or in Bob Dylan's studio. In the living room, you can experience all different kinds of acoustics of the world. To do that, we have a lot of loudspeakers set up and microphones set up, and we will capture the acoustic reflection coming from the walls and the building. So we are basically sweeping tone from low frequency to high frequency, and then each frequency is activating the room behavior. And by recording that specific tone, we can actually capture the room behavior. We're trying to sample some spot which actually reveal the most characteristic acoustic behavior of this building. So we imagine that where would be the most kind of active thing would happen in this building 100 years ago. Because one position does not actually symbolize the entire complexity of this building's acoustics. So we're trying to capture as many as possible. So we want to preserve that acoustics in a digital form so that in future we can restore that acoustics in any event. Acoustic is a big part of the life, big part of the human behavior, and that's why we want to measure this accurately. When you have a good acoustics, it enhances the quality of the performance. It also enhances the enjoyment of the play. And we're very interested in the end of all of this in translating what we measure and record today to something that people can listen to and that can feel with sound with their whole body. I was in RIT. Uh, I'm, I am still affiliated with RIT. But anyway, um, so uh, there was a big thing in RIT. So um, they made uh, this nice uh, video production. Okay, let me just go. Okay. And third thing is auditory training. Previously, I have developed uh, timber training, spaciousness training, and localization training, which I presented in the various journals and uh, uh, conferences. Recently, I integrate all those you know, technical ear training component or audit as a one single game. As you can see, it's basically um, a challenge and conquer uh, concept. You, uh, you come to you know, one stage and complete the one stage and go to the next one, things like that. So it has the four uh, units or modules in it. It, tra it trains a spectral identification, timbre training. Also it does uh, localization training and then it measure consistency. And then also it measures the uh, mixed memory uh, capabilities as well. So if we present a certain mix, uh, how long or how quickly a, li a listener can remember the balance of the given mix of the sound component as the fourth module. 
Okay, so one of our application is rehabilitation, as I told you, right? So the um, auditory feedback game is, uh, sorry, neural feedback game is the recent application of our auditory training um, things. This is a collaboration with the University of Iowa. So um, this is basically we do training using audit uh, neural feedback. So instead of using um, the mouse and keyboard in a traditional way. So spaceship is trying to catch this coin. However, uh, what we need to do is simply attending to a specific auditory cue. In this case, up and down sound. You will hear up and down sound soon. Down, up, down, up, down, up. down. Down. So since target is down, you, your, tar your mission was to focus on the down sound. And if you well attended to the down sound, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. now you are attending to the up sound and then the brain uh, responses we measure and then send it to. So that um, by repeating this kind of, you know, your attention and then kind of plus the reward from an achievement of game. So by kind of this kind of your attention and get up uh, or reward through the game, this kind of neural feedback game is known to be very effective to um, improve your um, speech understanding uh, capabilities. So I'm going to you know review my research focus. There's three things. First is virtual auditory environment, where we creating the so interactive room acoustic, room acoustic environment and record how to recapture and how to deliver those kind of virtual environment is the first one. Second one is stemmed from the first one, which is um, how to preserve acoustically important uh, building uh, for future uh, for future for the future. And then the third one is uh, auditory training. I think that's it. So if you have any question, um, please uh, let me know at any time. So thank you so much.